What a wonderful way to begin a new year. Some uh, lively, um, worshipful music. Uh, it's great to gather in this place to worship God, to give him thanks for what he has done and for what he is going to do. So I welcome all of you who are gathered here this morning. And for those watching online, we're glad that you've joined in with us as well. Well, I believe that God wants us, wants to do a new thing in all of our lives as we head into the new year. New beginnings start when we realize that we, were, we are powerless to change ourselves. It's important that we, we try, we strive, but we can't change ourselves from sinful people into sinless people. That's only a transformation that comes as the Holy Spirit works in our lives. But when we look to God for an encounter with Jesus, we find the power to change our lives. And that power can change our lives forever. In fact, every encounter we have with Jesus is an opportunity to change our lives. Well, the month of January, as you probably know, um, is named after Janus, the Roman god of beginnings. And he was symbolized as a man with two faces, one looking forward and one looking backward. And that's what we need to do today, to briefly look backward to the past year and to learn what we can learn from our past mistakes, from our, new, from our experiences. What can we learn, evaluate? But our focus needs to be on the future and the opportunity for spiritual growth that lies ahead. You know, it's been said that the, the rear view mirror in the car is much smaller than the windshield um, that lies before you. Because you, you just you look at the back, you want to see what's in behind you to make sure everything's okay. But your focus needs to be looking forward. And that's what we need to do as we look forward into this new year. I want you to, when you go home today, look at your new calendars. There are probably electronic calendars today. I don't know how many of you use the paper calendars you know, it, it's still good to, to have something written down, isn't it, and, and to, to see and to look at. But, but if you look on the calendar, uh, your old calendar's probably all filled in with, with things, uh, appointments from the past, schedules, opportunities. But uh, the new one is, is probably relatively free. And this new year provides us with new opportunities for new beginnings. Everyone has the same amount of time as we move into this new year. The same amount of time to accomplish new things for God. We have to walk into the new year like it's a new season in life. And we can't allow what happened last year to predict what's coming up in the coming year. You are not your past. You are not your prior mistakes. You are not how people have treated you in the past, nor how they have tried to define you. Rather, you are a child of God. And as part of your inheritance, your Heavenly Father is delivering you into a fresh new year. In this new season, allow your Creator to define who you are, to provide what you need, and to guide you where he wants you to go. The Apostle Paul declares in 2 Corinthians 5, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And all this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to, uh, to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against, us, against them. 
And he has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin um, to be sin for us. That's what Christ did on the cross. He had no sin. He was perfect. But he bore our sins on his body on the cross. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. It's not what we do, but it's what Christ has done for us. And so as God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. You see, God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. We've been called to be Christ ambassadors. And in this new season, take your eyes off of your own circumstances and place them on Jesus. Don't look to the right or to the left. Don't be distracted by the size of the battle. Instead, remember who you are fighting for. And your God controls every battlefield. He has a mission for us. And he will empower us to accomplish it. The one who controls the wind and the waves will fight for you. He will provide for you. You don't have to do it alone in this new year. God is making a way and providing all you need. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, he offers us some advice on how to move into this new year. And he says, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. And now it springs up. Do you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. It's not going to be easy, but change is coming. Change is a part of life. Now, the way through the wilderness requires focus on the mission. It requires focus on Jesus, or you can easily get lost in the wilderness. But the reward for that determination and that focus is the refreshing waters of eternal life. Now just because you can't see the change coming doesn't mean that it's not happening. The Lord wants you to live your best life in Him this year. That doesn't mean it's going to be easier. There won't be any problems. In fact, there will be problems and trials and tribulations. But he wants your total commitment, your total uh, um, uh, surrender to him. Don't seek a solution. Seek Jesus' face. Focus and meditate on the truths of his word. Press on, trusting God and his promises that are found in scripture. Seek him now. Begin living each day for Christ. And he will lead you to new heights with him in the coming year. Paul encourages us in Philippians 3.13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. God is not disappointed in you. He rejoices over you with singing. You are his child. God created you and he loves you dearly. Nothing is unknown to him. Even before he created you and your in your mother's womb, God knew the mistakes that you would make and the problems that you were, would make and he made you anyway. 
in this new year. Jesus is calling you now to come to him despite your faults and to trust his plan for your life. His plans are good for your future. He loves you that much. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Cling to this promise. This can be the year to lay down your worries. This can be a year to tell anxiety goodbye. This can be the year to stop trying to do everything in your own power and start allowing God to take control. Well, how do you do that? Start simply by asking Jesus to take control of your life in the year ahead. And then seek him constantly, each and every day. When you first wake up in the morning, talk to God, speak to him. And don't stop until you lay your head on the pillow at the end of the day. When you love someone, you talk to them. Build your relationship with Jesus by talking to him regularly. Paul encourages us to pray without ceasing. Well, what does this mean? Well, it means that on one level, as you're living your life, going through uh, life, there, there's one level, but there's another level where you're praying to God in the midst of what's going on in the life all around you. Tell God your fears, your hopes, your dreams, your worries, and your gratefulness. Ask for his help as you live your life. As you seek the Lord in conversation and relationship, you will feel more comfortable in trusting him as you go along. Grab a Bible and read from it every day. There are all kinds of wonderful Bible uh, study plans, devotion Bibles, um, how to read through the New Testament in a year, how to read through the Bible in a year, uh, the U Bible, something you can put on your phone, have with you all the time, all kinds of different plans to help you uh, read the Bible and do devotions, and I would encourage you um, to do that. So read the Bible every day, even if you don't understand all of it. You know, sometimes as I'm reading through, um, I'm thinking, wow, and sometimes something will kind of jump out at you and think, wow, I hadn't really noticed that before. And it, you know, it kind of catches you off guard. There's some things in the Bible I sure don't understand. And I look forward to talking with God when I get uh, to heaven. But don't let that keep you from reading and studying God's word. Ask your father to reveal his truth to you uh, as you read scripture. Before you begin reading, just say a little prayer. God, help me to understand. God, let me hear from you uh, this morning. Just a, a simple prayer. Jesus tells us in his Sermon on the Mount, uh, uh, you know, just an amazing uh, sermon. He says, seek and you will find. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Jesus. Jesus is there. Commit to seeking Jesus through his word. And then watch your life change. When you have a problem, seek the Lord. Speak to him about it. Pray for his guidance. And read the Bible to, uh, to find the answer. When you have a worry, hand it over to him in prayerful conversation. Tell your daddy in heaven, Abba, Father, your your, your daddy, we can have that close, intimate relationship with him. Tell him, say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I can't fix this problem. But I believe you can and trust in him. Believe it and then watch what God will do. And he may be calling you to take a step of action, a step of faith on your way to finding that answer. Celebrate those small victories that you have in him. 
Maybe even write them down. Tell him, thank you. Focus on the positive things in your life and pray about the rest. Speak life into your day. Speak scripture out loud. Sometimes it's just good just to, to, to say it, to read the scriptures out loud, especially some of the Psalms or some of the verses. Um, speak positively about yourself. This is something I've got to work on. It's been a struggle all my life. True confession here. You know, you're not old, fat, or out of shape. Well, maybe, maybe. But that isn't how God sees us. God sees us as people who have the potential to do great things. God used a 100-year-old man and his 90-year-old wife to give birth to a great nation that's still alive today. God used an unknown, young, unknown shepherd boy to slay a giant that was uh, terrifying the Israeli army. You are a child of God, created in his image to do great things for his kingdom. He fashioned you according to his will. And so be excited for the life that he has destined for you as you seek his will. Trust Jesus in this new year and you will see new heights with him. Seek and you will find. You were made for so much more than this. Step into the new year with a new passion for seeking God's purpose and plan for your life. Proverbs 3, um, 5 and 6 commands us to Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him. I don't understand, but Lord, I'm going to submit to you. And he will make your paths straight. So as we begin this new year, there's one thing that we all have in common as we are gathered here this morning, and that's we're all sinners, aren't we? None of us are worthy of God's unconditional love. Accept that reality. But don't remain there. Repent of your sins. That's what this Lord's Supper is all about. To remember God's love for us. To remember that God sent his son to die for us because we can't save ourselves. Uh, remember what Jesus has done for us so that we can Repent of our sins and be purified from them through Christ's blood on the cross. And remember every sinner, all of us gathered here, have a future. Solomon said that there is no man that doesn't sin. Paul said all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. James says we stum stumble in many ways. Isn't that true? Wherever you've been, whatever you've done, you are standing in a new doorway. The doorway of a brand new moment. We are standing at the threshold of a new year. Today is a brand new day. In fact, every breath we take is a new chance. God is so good um, that he's given us new days and new years because he knows that we need so many times to start over again. But God doesn't give up on us. Well, so how should we get ready for these new beginnings in the new year? The Apostle Paul tells us in that Philippian passage we looked to before Philippians 3, beginning with verse 8. Yes, Everything else is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. No matter what else this world has to offer, nothing compared to Paul to his relationship with Jesus Christ. I have discarded everything else 
counting it all as garbage, and that, that word there means, means dung. I mean, it's, he's being very graphic. Everything that he had accomplished in his life, he considered as worthless compared to his relationship with Jesus Christ. So that I may have Christ and become with him. I no longer count on my own goodness or my ability to obey God's law, but I trust Christ to save me. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. As a result, I can really know Christ and experience the mighty power that, w that raised him from the dead. I can learn what it means to suffer with him sharing in his death so that somehow I can experience resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. That's not going to happen. But I keep working toward that day when I will finally be all that Jesus Christ saved me for and wants me to be. Nope. I'm still not what I should be. Focusing all of my energies on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to the goal to win the prize. Upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul tells us we need to, one, get to know Jesus better. That I may know him. First things first. Our most important goal must be to get to know Jesus better. So we need to develop good habits this year. Good habits of prayer, regular prayer, Bible study. Finding ways to put these things that we're learning into practice. Sometimes that's the best way to learn. Two, admit that we are broken. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things, Paul says. We must admit that we're broken that we're not perfect. But that doesn't mean that God can't use us. There's a song maybe you've heard by uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman called Broken. Maybe you can relate to this. I'm just a well-dressed wreck. I'm just a made-up mess. Working hard to keep everybody impressed. All the while, I'm falling apart inside. I look around to see if anyone is like me, and at first glance tells me that I'm all alone in the sea. And then I look a little deeper, and we're all in the same boat. We all just need to know we're all broken. We're all broken, and we all need a Savior. This is a fool's parade. The way we masquerade. Trying to make everybody think it's all okay. And the truth is, we're all living a story. What if we all got brave? Enough to take away that we're hiding behind, um, all we're hiding behind, even just for a day. And let the scars show even a little. But I know the honesty will show us all to be broken. We're all broken. And we all need a Savior. Paul agrees that we're all broken. But he also says that we need to forget the past. All your past failures, your mistakes, all your broken resolutions. Anyone broken a New Year's resolution yet? Well... Um, statistics will say that you will be breaking them if you haven't already. But look forward. Your future destiny is in God. There are new beginnings ahead. And press on towards that goal. Well, what are some of the goals that we should press on for? They're really pretty simple. Here are some practical suggestions. Pray. Pray. Develop your personal relationship with Jesus. As we've mentioned before, read your Bible regularly. Serve in the church. 
use the gifts and abilities that God has given you. Witness. Tell others about Jesus. This is such good news. We can't keep it to ourselves. And there's a world out there that desperately needs to hear about Jesus. Pray for the sick. We have lots of needs. Pray for the sick. Get involved in missions. Giving and or doing. Both are necessary. But sometimes the easy thing to do is to write a check. The hard thing to do is to get involved in the lives of other people. But sometimes that's where the real change in our lives can take place. Do random acts of kindness. You will never know how little acts of kindness may change a life. Break a bad habit or stop a habitual sin, and don't stop there. You need to replace it with a good one. Forgive someone, just as in Christ he has forgiven you. Work on relationships with others. The Christian faith is really all about relationships. Relationships first and foremost with God and relationships with one another. Christian faith, broken down to its basic form, is love God, love your neighbor. Easy to say, hard to do. But trust God and see what he will do. One way that we can prepare for this new year and this new beginning is to remember what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. So let us now prepare our hearts as we prepare to partake of this sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Let us go to him in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for new beginnings, for new life, for hope, for the gift of eternal life, for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for your grace and mercy and for sending your son Jesus that we've just celebrated during the Christmas season. And Father, I pray now that your Holy Spirit, who's present with us uh, right here in this service or in our homes and wherever we are watching this service, I just pray, Heavenly Father, that your Spirit will reveal um, sin in our lives. What sin, whatever is blocking our relationship with you. Lord, may your Spirit bring it to us that we might confess it, repent of it, turn from it and be cleansed and open up new beginnings in our life with you. So hear us now as we confess our sins. Father, thank you for hearing our confession. Thank you for the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ that we celebrate this morning. Thank you for this sacrament of the Lord's Supper, an opportunity for us to uh, physically, um, concretely, visibly participate in our new life through Jesus Christ. He died for our sins and he broke the power of sin and death when he raised to new life. And he lives forever in heaven and we praise you for that, Lord. And it's, uh, it's just amazing to think that, that Jesus is in heaven with you praying and interceding on our behalf as is the Holy Spirit. And that those times when we struggle in, in the new year that will come, those times when we struggling. We don't know where to go. There's nothing we can do but to cry out to you and to know when we don't have the words to say that your Holy Spirit comes and intercedes on our behalf and prays for us. Father, may we come to new life this morning and to experience that new life and may you spiritually nourish your people uh, for the journey that lies ahead. 
We thank you for this supper and we pray that your Holy Spirit will just transform these ordinary elements into spiritual food to equip us for the journey. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a wonderful story that the Apostle Paul tells us that on that night he was sitting around in that room, that upper room with his disciples, and he'd been looking forward to this time. He knew that his life on earth was just about over. And they were celebrating the Passover feast, something that goes way back in history that they'd been celebrating, how God had freed the Egyptians from slave, that freed the Israelites from slavery in, in Egypt. And this and established this Passover meal um, to help them remember God's faithfulness. But now Jesus was going to do something else to help us remember and look back for something that he was about to do, die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And so during that night, he took the bread as a part of that Passover meal and he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And this is a a celebration. Sometimes it's, a, it's a, a meal that we reflect on the sorrow of Jesus suffering, but as we begin a new year, this is a, a celebration for us. The good news that Jesus came, he died, but he arose again from the dead and that he has a plan and a purpose for our lives, for his church, for his people. And the Holy Spirit equips us for that. But each of us have to make an individual decision. Who is Jesus Christ? Have I invited him into my life? And so this supper is for anyone who is hungering and thirsting for more of Jesus in their lives. We don't come because we're worthy. We come because Jesus is worthy. And so I bid you as we share this, as we pass the trays uh, to you, to take the, the bread and eat the bread as it is passed to you. And this symbolizes our individual decision that we've made to accept Jesus as our Savior and Lord. And then later as we pass the cup, we we'll ask that you hold the cup, symbolizing the unity that we have in the body of Christ. So I bid you now, come, take, and eat. As you know, on that same night, Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Friends, the good news is Jesus is coming again. So I ask you now to come Take and drink. This is the new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. And why ask that you hold the cup until everybody has been served. Friends, the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. Let us pray. Father, what wonder, a wonderful privilege we have to share this meal as we begin a new year that lies before us. And may it truly be new beginnings for all of us. New beginnings where you reveal yourself to us in powerful ways. Where we are amazed at the way that you work in our lives and we just simply open our lives to you and trust in you and walk by faith and not by sight. So, Lord, um, may we be spiritually empowered. May we be spiritually encouraged. And may we um, have a, a passion to look to this new year and for the great things that you will do in us and through us. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us in our worship service this morning, both you here and those of you who are watching online. We pray that you have felt the, the presence and the power of God uh, in our midst. And remember that that presence and power of God will go with you as you go out into the world for new beginnings. And I just pray that God will use you and open your eyes to see things that God sees um, as you look out around you and the world around you. And you will see hope and you will see what love can do to change the world. And that God has a plan and a purpose for your life to go and to make a difference. So go in the power and the love of Jesus Christ. And as you go, uh, you may leave your offerings to help support the life and ministry of this church and the offering plates um, uh, at the end, back of the church. Go in peace and love your neighbor. Amen.